Well, let's have a look at question 8. This question says determine the equation of the tangent to that curve at that point. Now, when we determine the equation of the tangent, we need the gradient. Now, in order to get the gradient, we need the derivative of y with respect to x. But as you can see, this function has x's and y's in, so we need to use um, implicit differentiation. Alright, so starting, let's start by differentiating x cubed times y. We will need to use the product rule. So using the product rule, we differentiate the first function, which is and with respect to x. So it's x cubed becomes 3x squared, and the second function is y. Appears as is. Plus the first function as is, times by the derivative of y with respect to x. So first we find the derivative of y with respect to y, which is 1, and then we write the derivative of y with respect to x. Then we're going to go minus, and now we're going to look at the y cubed. So we say what is the derivative of y cubed first with respect to y? We know it's 3y squared, but because we're differentiating with respect to x, we're going to have to say the derivative of y with respect to x equals the derivative of 2x squared with respect to x, nice and easy, it's 4x. Now I want to group all the terms that have the derivative of y with respect to x together and take out a common factor, which I can do easily in one step. So I've got the derivative of y with respect to x, and I've got in my brackets x cubed minus 3y squared. Then obviously that 3x squared y can be subtracted from both sides. Now I want the derivative of y with respect to x as the subject of my formula. So I'm going to divide. So I've got 4x minus 3x squared y divided by x cubed minus 3y squared. Great, but now I need to find the gradient at the point 1 and negative 1. So I sub in that x value of 1. So the gradient will be equal to 4 times 1, and I sub in the 1 again, and I sub in the y value of negative 1. Again, I sub my x to be 1, and I sub my y to be negative 1. Pop that all in your calculator. Let your calculator do the hard work for you. And you get negative 7 over 2. Great, so I've got the gradient. Don't stop there. I think a few people did do that in the exam. You need to actually find the equation of the straight line. So remember the way we do that. We go y minus the y value, which is y minus negative 1, which is y plus 1, equals the gradient, and x minus the x value, which is 1, Rearrange that, you get y equals negative 7 over 2, x plus 5 over 2. I think what a few people did was you actually found the gradient of the normal. You then went one step further, and I'm not quite sure why. Remember, tangent, you've got that gradient. You don't need to find the gradient of the normal. Let's have a look at mark allocations. Okay, firstly, you're going to get an accuracy, accuracy, accuracy and accuracy and a method for the fact that you are using implicit differentiation. Alright, you're going to get another method mark here and a CA mark from based on what you've done. Okay, and a method mark for subbing in and a CA for getting it right a method mark for subbing in, and a CA for getting it right. Let's have a look at question 9. Right, determine the nth derivative of the following function. Now, we need to start by finding the first and second derivative at least, in order to see a bit of a pattern. So let's first find the first derivative. We're going to use the chain rule, that 20 comes to the front, then you've got 4x plus 10, and what are we doing? We are subtracting 1 from the exponent. So I'm actually going to write that as 20 minus 1, just so you can see the pattern. 
And then don't forget we times it by the derivative inside, which is 4. Let's try the second derivative. Well, the exponent, which is actually 19, comes to the front. So we've got 20, and we times it by that 19. We've got 4x plus 10. And we've got 20 minus 1, and we minus another 1, which is 20 minus 2. And now we've got a 4. And we times it by another 4, which gives us a 4 squared. That should be enough to see the pattern for the nth derivative. So let's find the nth derivative. So I've got 20 times 19, which looks like we got 20 factorial, but we've got to take away everything below it. So that's 20 minus n factorial. The first one would have been 20 minus 1, which is 19. The second one is 20 minus 2, which is 18. Then, don't forget your 4x plus 10. And then you've got 20 minus n times by 4 to the power of n. So let's see our marks. You've got a method for doing some background stuff here. And you get an accuracy mark. You get an accuracy mark. Accuracy. Accuracy, which actually I probably should have put that in brackets. And an accuracy mark here. Yeah.